Welcome into the kitchen. Welcome to 2022. Welcome to my smart home. There's a lot going on in here and this isn't a video to say, oh, this is the best smart home you can get. This is the idealistic thing. These are just all things that I have come across in my last sort of two or three years of looking at smart home gadgets, reviewing smart home gadgets and installing what I deem to be suitable to do the jobs that I want them to do. And obviously everybody's use case is a little bit different. Let's start out this video by talking about the numerous hubs that live in this house and we have one two three four five of them to go through So our first hub lives behind the Who Made the Rules sign in this room and it is the SwitchBot hub right there. This connects to my Wi-Fi network via Wi-Fi and is powered by USB off the back of this sign. I've recently over the last year been getting into some thread devices and for any of those devices, this is the hub for that. It connects to the Wi-Fi via Wi-Fi and is my little thread gateway. Now this is my boiler room upstairs which houses the remaining three hubs that I use primarily in my house. To the left here we've got the Somfy hub, this is for all of the blinds. We've got the Akara hub, more about this later because this is doing so much in my house at the moment. And then we've got the Philips Hue bridge which is obviously just for all the Philips Hue devices. Now for reliability all of these hubs are connected to the network via a gigabit network switch to ensure, well, the best reliability. So let's talk about lighting first off. In here, we primarily got loads of Lifex. Lifex strips, basically. One up there, one under here, another here, one more there. We've got a strip behind the Who Made the Rules. We've got one behind my beehive unit here. One that people miss off all the time is the one that's actually behind this very live cactus, and it is a 100% real cactus. This will rip your arms off. And then to finish off in the kitchen, we've got a bloom light that's lighting up my planters in the corner here, and then another bloom light, which is lighting up this picture behind my, well, my workstation in the kitchen. Oh, there's one more, a Lifex bulb in there, check him out. Now all of the lights in the kitchen are currently turned off and I can interface with these lights through one of two different ways. I've got them tied into my Google Homes, which I have a few of around the house, so I can use the Google Home app or my voice. They are also all HomeKit compatible, which is something that I've been really enjoying recently. Everything is tied into my HomeKit, works with my Home Hub. Therefore, I can go ahead and click on Kitchen Daytime that one button click turns on all the lights in here from both Philips Hue and LifeX, two completely different manufacturers working together. This is the Apple Home app, and as you can see, there's a picture of my kitchen up there. You'd have probably missed it if I didn't point it out. Now this is a simple UK socket, which is plugged into a Philips Smart Hue socket. So basically, this neon light works with the Philips Hue app, therefore it works with my Apple Home Kit and inside of Google. Now moving on from the kitchen, we've got my garden. Now there's actually a lot of smart things out there, all basically controlled by this little Akara sensor here, which notices when the door is open or closed. It will then either push a push notification to my phone, so great for security, but what it does basically is whenever this back door is opened at certain specific times of the day, i.e. the evening, it will then go ahead and turn on certain lights. And there's quite a few in the garden. I've got my festival lights, I've got the garden wall, all lights and then they all go off after specified amount of time. I usually come here and let the dog out in the evening so it's nice for him to have sort of 10 minutes of light in the garden before I bring him back in again. So the lights are currently turned off in the bathroom but if I open the door they have turned on just like that because we have a little Akara motion sensor here. Now this Akara motion sensor ties into Apple HomeKit so do the GU10 Philips Hue spotlights in the ceiling of this room. Now in here there's a few scenes set up. Basically in the daytime, the lights will come on as they have now. At nighttime though, they only come on to about 25% or so, because when you come in here at night time, you don't want to be blinded by 100% white daylight. It's just not a nice experience. Having a smart home is about making things work for you in the ways you want them to. 
So follow me into the lounge. This is where it starts to get a little bit tricky, but it all does work really, really well. So little Philips Hue remote in my hand. I've just literally taken this from right there. It lives right next to the door. In the drop ceiling of this room, we have two LifeX LED strips like we have in the kitchen. Now behind the TV, you can't see them obviously, we've got two Philips Hue lights. I think they're called the play bars and they light up either side of the TV. And then over here in this wooden lamp, we've got a nano leaf thread bulb. Now this is connected via the thread protocol to the Apple HomeKit. So basically we've got LifeX, Philips Hue and this little bulb here that's working off thread. Now if I click this remote on, you should see that this has come on, the drop ceiling LEDs have come on, and so have the lights behind the TV. Now that's because basically all this remote is doing is activating these lights behind the TV. But then in the Apple Home app, I've got a routine set up that says, okay, if the TV lights are turned on, also turn on that light and these lights. And then if these TV lights turn off, subsequently turn off the rest of the lights. It really is that simple. Now, AV equipment. I'm not one for playing music with my voice because usually I like to scroll through my playlists and find a track that I want to listen to. But I've got to get the speakers on somehow. So we can do that by saying, hey Siri, turn on the kitchen speakers. Now these are the Kef LS50 wireless and they are not a smart connected speaker, but what they do have, like most common household appliances, is an IR remote control. That's where the SwitchBot hub that lives behind the Who Made the Rule sign comes in. I've set up a little scene that says if I say turn on the kitchen speakers blast off from the switch bot hub to these speakers to turn them on and obviously it does the exact same thing to turn off the speakers as well and everything that I've just described in the last 30 seconds works also with the TV now annoyingly for some reason and I know it's expensive a lot of people like to throw shade on Philip Hue here on YouTube, and I 100% agree it is very, very expensive, but it is also really, really good. It works well. I've actually had this here little remote probably for, I wanna say about six years, and it is still in the exact same condition that I bought it in six years ago, and it still works. I don't even think I've changed the battery on this thing. But basically what's going on here is, if I click that button there, we've got a few sets of lights that have just come on. So we've got one, two, three, four of the bloom lights, and then you'll have noticed that these LED strips behind the shelves have come on. Now, if I was to do this with actual Philips Hue LED strips, that would be very, very expensive. These aren't Hue strips, but they work with the Hue remote. Alex, how have you done that? Basically, all I've done is these are a dumb set of LEDs for like 20 pound off Amazon connected again to a Philips Hue smart plug that simply just turns on and off the LED strips. So I have the exact same Philips Hue experience, but for half the price basically. Much like the setup in the lounge, I've got a scene set up that says, okay, if we detect that the desk lights get turned on, then subsequently turn on the LifeX tiles, exactly the same thing when you turn them off again. Basically, I don't even have to control that LifeX thing, it just copies what the Hue lights are doing and therefore everything works off the buttons. Right, now let's go and check out where the magic happens, but before we do, I need to thank our sponsor, NordVPN. Protect your online privacy by encrypting all of your traffic that you send to and from the internet via your ISP. Now there's so many VPNs out there, why at TechFlow do we like Nord? Now obviously the main reason to actually use a VPN is to protect your privacy online. That's why Nord use completely diskless servers and don't store any of your user data at their server locations. So anything you do through Nord is completely untraceable. Now Nord are introducing this new thing called Nord Links. Now what they're setting out to do with Nord Links is to make sure you and your client device, like your laptop or your phone, and the Nord server, the connection between those devices Devices, let's make sure that's super, super secure. If one VPN server isn't good enough for you, with Nord, you can actually use two VPN servers, yes, two at any one time. And like I've said, all their servers are 10 gigs, so it's gonna be super, super fast. And honestly, guys, it really is no more every month than a cup of coffee. I'll put all the links for you guys down there, and thanks to Nord for sponsoring this video. But here's the difference with this room. If you look up, there is actually a Philips Hue motion sensor up there as well. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Alex, why? 
would you have a button on the wall and a motion sensor? Do they not both do the exact same thing? Control the lights. The short answer is yes, but the longer answer is no. Now I've also got another button on my bedside table. This simply just activates the bedside lights and does absolutely nothing else. So I can quickly click it and turn these lights off should I need to. Now, Alex, what's the motion sensor for? And it's for different times of the day. So what I have this set up to do is in the daytime, all the lights will come on 100%, like they do in the downstairs toilet, nice and bright so you can see what's going on. But let's say I get up, or whoever's in here gets up to go to the toilet at 3 a.m., and you're stumbling around because there isn't any light on. Well, because that motion sensor knows what time it is, i.e. 3 in the morning, there's no light outside and the blinds are down, then all it's gonna do is turn on what I call guide lighting, which is a couple of these spotlights in the roof on a red warm light at about 1%. Now this will only last for about three minutes. So should somebody get up to venture downstairs to get a drink in the middle of the night or simply get up to visit the bathroom, as soon as their foot touches the floor out of the bed, the motion sensor will see them, turn on the guide lighting, and then when they get back into bed, three minutes later, they automatically turn off without you even having to wink an eyelid. And the only last actual box of a room in my house to talk about is the bathroom. There is another Philips Hue dimmer here. We've also got an all audio system in here from Lythe. We've got two, I think, six and a half inch drivers uh, in the roof, which automatically connect to things like AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect, should you want to be jamming in the shower, which I do far more often than I would like to admit. However, this is the most surprising thing for me. It's probably the smart home product that I have had the most questions about, yet I find literally the most boring. These are Somfy smart blinds, and I have them on the entire first floor of my house. Now, you can control them, via your voice, so via my Siri on my phone or via any of the Googles in the house by saying either blinds up or blinds down. Or you can simply just use one of these little clickers here. You click it and then the blinds start to go down. It really, really is that simple. Unfortunately, there's only two modes. You've got blinds down and blinds up. If you want to, let's say, stop the blinds halfway up, you have to use the remote. But for putting the blinds down in the evening and putting them back up in the morning, it's just as simple as using your voice. So a quick demo would be, hey Siri, blinds up. Now there's only a couple of last things to mention. I've got a few input methods. So one thing I've always told you guys on my channel is I like using my voice to control my smart home, but it is a little bit of a faff every now and again because it doesn't hear you and sometimes you've got music playing and yada, yada, yada. Sometimes a simple switch is much nicer. Now we've talked about this on the channel before. This is a switch and it works with the Acara gateway. Therefore, it works with Google Home and Apple's HomeKit. So I can click this one button here and that then controls all of the lights in here. You see how rapid that is. A few of those little switch bots in other places like my garage door. So therefore my unsmart garage door is now smart because I can both close it and open it from anywhere in the world via the little robotic arms. So there you guys have it. There's a whole mashup of stuff in this house from LifeX strips to expensive stuff like Philips Hue to fun little gadgets like the switch bot system and the switch bot hub. Hope you guys have enjoyed this little tour and if you want to know anything else let me know in the comments down below if you've got any questions about how things are working, how things aren't working because let's be honest it's a smart home, things do break. But anyway guys my name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow and yeah we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.